Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. I love the straightforwardness and the simplicity that that he uses to teach. His teachings are very simple for everybody to understand. If it hadn't been for this ministry, I don't know where I would be. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I'm continuing a series that I started last week talking about Don't Limit God. And for those of you that missed any of those programs, it was in uh, 2002, January the 31st, that the Lord spoke to me and probably the second most important encounter I've ever had with the Lord as far as changes that it made in my life. He told me I was limiting Him. Psalm 78, 41 says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And the Lord just spoke to me that His plans for me and my life and my ministry were bigger than what I was seeing, and that I was limiting Him by my small thinking. And boy, when that happened, I mean, it revolutionized my life. And so now, January the 31st was the 20th anniversary of that happening. And so we are coming out with a brand new teaching. I I made this, I think it was in 2002. It could have been in 2003 when I wrote this book on Don't Limit God and shared about what God had spoken to me. And I've seen many, many people's lives change through this. But now it's 20 years later. So we've got an updated teaching entitled Don't Limit God 20 Years Later. And uh, I'm teaching it with added revelation, things that God has shown me, especially when I get into the part about imagination. Uh, I just mentioned some things briefly in here, but now I've got an entire book that I wrote on the subject of imagination. And um, I, I just believe that this is something that could benefit every single person watching this. I don't think a single one of us, myself included, nobody has ever fully manifested God to the world. I don't believe that the world has ever seen somebody who just completely took the limits off God and let God use them. Now, we got some great examples in Scripture, but I'm talking about in our, in our modern day, regardless what you've ever seen a person do, God's always got more. So I think that every one of us could benefit from this. We have a tendency to compare ourselves among ourselves and measure ourselves by ourselves. And most people realize that there's something more. They realize that there, there's there got to be potential things that they could do that they aren't experiencing, but they look around and everybody else seems to be similar to the way they are. And we just tend to uh, settle in and become average like everybody else. God did not call you to be average. God called you to do something supernatural. Again, every one of our callings are different, and you can't evaluate what's really God by the size that it is. Because, you know, I've got people that work for me that clean the facilities. And some people will think, well, that's not a great job. But I've had people come to our meetings before, and I had one guy who ran the church, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, the custodial department or something, maintenance department at his church. And before the conference even start, he came to me and he says, I've already been ministered to. He says, I went into the bathrooms and he actually ran his finger across the every, you know, the counters and everything. And he says, I've never seen a place taken care of like this. And he says, this is already ministered to me. And we have people that come here and they see the excellence and they see the way that everybody takes care of things and it ministers to them. So I'm saying, you know, you don't have to have a high profile job, but whatever you do, you need to do it with excellence and you need to do it in a way that you, that God is using it to touch people. I actually uh, heard of a man one time, a friend of mine knew this man who he got up and said that he was called to be a trash collector. And most people would think that's not a great job, but he says, somebody's got to collect the trash. It uh, performs a service. He says, what would our cities be like? if we didn't have people that collected the trash. Plus, he says, I talk to the people when I'm going around and collecting trash. And he says, many of these people will never go to church. They'll never watch a Christian broadcast. He says, God is using me. And he felt called to do what he was doing. And he was seeing people born again and lives changed and good things happening. 
SO AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THAT EVERYBODY HAS TO DO SOMETHING WHERE THEY'RE FAMOUS AND EVERYBODY KNOWS ABOUT THEM, BUT WHATEVER YOU DO, THERE NEEDS TO BE um, GOD FLOWING THROUGH IT, MIRACULOUS THINGS. I TALKED ABOUT SOME OF THE PEOPLE IN OUR BIBLE STUDIES THAT JUST SAW THEIR MOTHER DIE AND THEY RAISED THEM FROM THE DEAD. I MEAN, THOSE ARE JUST HOUSEWIVES, AND YET GOD IS USING THEM. THIS ONE LADY THAT I'M THINKING OF, SHE STRUGGLED FINANCIALLY AND SHE TOOK THE TEACHING ABOUT HOW GOD WANTED TO PROSPER YOU AND MEET YOUR NEEDS, AND SHE BELIEVED FOR IT. AND SHE GOT ON THIS SHOW, I THINK IT'S CALLED SHARK TANK, AND SHE MADE THIS THING THAT LOOKS KIND OF LIKE A SKATEBOARD, BUT IT'S GOT A BUBBLE ON THE BOTTOM, AND YOU USE IT TO EXERCISE AND TWIST. AND THE WOMAN HAS MADE, I DON'T EVEN KNOW, BUT MILLIONS, MAYBE maybe A BILLION DOLLARS OR SOMETHING OFF OF THAT THING. AND THIS IS JUST A WOMAN THAT WAS A HOUSEWIFE THAT ACTUALLY AT ONE TIME, JAMIE AND I uh, GAVE MONEY TO TO HELP BECAUSE she, SHE WAS HAVING TROUBLE FEEDING HER KIDS. AND SO SHE HAD GOD INTERVENE IN HER LIFE, AND, and SHE NOW IS TOUCHING PEOPLE, AND GOD SUPPLIED HER, AND SHE'S ABLE TO DO A LOT OF THINGS. SO GOD HAS SOMETHING SPECIAL FOR EVERY ONE OF US, BUT WE'VE GOT TO LEARN TO TAKE THE LIMITS OFF. IF YOU MISSED ANY OF THIS LAST WEEK, I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GO GET IT. AND I MADE A LITTLE LIST LAST NIGHT BEFORE I GOT UP TO MINISTER TODAY. AND HERE'S 17 THINGS THAT I JUST SAID OFF THE TOP OF MY HEAD THAT GOD HAS CHANGED, how, HOW OUR MINISTRY IS TOTALLY TRANSFORMED. AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO GO BACK AND WATCH A WEEK AGO TODAY, MONDAY'S BROADCAST, BECAUSE WHAT I'M SHARING WITH YOU ISN'T THEORY. IT'S NOT JUST DOCTRINE. IT'S NOT THEOLOGY. IT'S PRACTICAL STUFF, AND IT HAS CHANGED MY LIFE. SO I SPENT ALL LAST WEEK TALKING ABOUT THOSE THINGS. ON FRIDAY OF LAST WEEK, I STARTED TALKING ABOUT TWO OF THE THINGS THAT CAUSED ME TO LIMIT GOD, AND ONE OF THEM WAS JUST COMPLACENCY, OR I THINK IT WOULD BE ACCURATE TO SAY LAZINESS. I HAD BEEN STRUGGLING SINCE 68 UNTIL 2000 IS WHEN WE STARTED ON TELEVISION. WHEN I STARTED ON TELEVISION, WE JUST STARTED SEEING A SUCCESS, PEOPLE RESPONDING TO OUR MINISTRY THE WAY THEY NEVER DID OFF OF RADIO, AND WE WERE HAVING FINANCES COME IN, WE WERE MINISTERING TO PEOPLE, WE HAD MORE PLACES TO GO THAN WE COULD EVER GO, AND WE JUST WERE AT A PLACE WHERE THINGS WERE WORKING WELL. IT WASN'T THE FULFILLMENT OF MY VISION. AT THAT TIME, WE WERE ONLY REACHING 3% OF THE U.S. POPULATION ON TELEVISION. AND I KNEW THAT GOD WANTED ME TO REACH AROUND THE WORLD. SO IT WASN'T LIKE I HAD OBTAINED MY VISION, BUT WE WERE AT A PLACE WHERE EVERYTHING WAS WORKING GOOD, AND FOR THE FIRST TIME, IT WAS LIKE I COULD TAKE A BREATHER. YOU KNOW, I ACTUALLY WAS IN uh, SOUTH AFRICA, AND I WAS HOLDING MEETINGS IN HEIDELBERG, SOUTH AFRICA, AND I WAS STAYING AT AN OSTRICH FARM, AND I WAS SITTING ON THE DECK OF THIS LITTLE PLACE THAT WE WERE AT, AND I WAS LOOKING OUT AT THE MOUNTAINS, AND I WAS JUST MEDITATING AND THINKING ABOUT THE GOODNESS OF GOD AND ALL HE HAD DONE. AND I ACTUALLY HAD A VISION. THIS WASN'T SOME I SAW WITH MY, my EYES, BUT I SAW THIS IN MY HEART, THAT IT WAS LIKE JAMIE AND I WERE PUSHING THIS HUGE BOULDER THAT WAS MUCH BIGGER THAN US, AND WE WERE ROLLING THIS THING UP THE HILL. AND IT WAS SO HARD TO DO THIS THAT IF WE WOULD HAVE STOPPED FOR ONE MINUTE TO REST, THAT THING WOULD HAVE ROLLED BACK ON US AND CRUSHED US. AND THAT'S THE WAY THAT I FELT THAT THE MINISTRY WAS FOR ABOUT THE FIRST, I DON'T KNOW, 20 OR 30 YEARS. IT WAS JUST A STRUGGLE. AND IF WE GAVE UP FOR A SECOND, IF WE TOOK A BREATH, WE WERE GOING TO BE DESTROYED. AND THEN I SAW US uh, REACHING A PLATEAU, AND NOW WE WERE PUSHING THE THING ALONG, AND IT WAS RELATIVELY EASY COMPARED TO WHAT WE HAD BEEN DOING WHEN IT WAS GOING UPHILL. AND THEN WE WENT OVER THE PLATEAU AND DOWN THE OTHER SIDE, and, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, THAT BOULDER JUST TOOK OFF, AND IT WAS ROLLING, AND JAMIE AND I WERE RUNNING AT THE TOP uh, SPEED THAT WE HAD, TRYING TO KEEP UP WITH THIS BOULDER AS IT WENT DOWNHILL. AND THE LORD WAS JUST, GAVE ME A LITTLE PICTURE THAT THAT'S KIND OF LIKE WHAT OUR LIFE AND MINISTRY HAD BEEN LIKE. FOR THE FIRST 34 YEARS, IT WAS JUST STRUGGLING TO STAY ALIVE AND TO KEEP MINISTERING. THEN WE WENT ON TELEVISION, AND WE STARTED, IT WAS RELATIVELY EASY. AND NOW WE ARE IN A POSITION WHERE GOD IS BLESSING US. That, MAN, IT'S TAKEN ALL I CAN DO TO JUST STAY UP WITH GOD. I MEAN, THE BLESSINGS OF GOD ARE COMING. SO ANYWAY, THIS IS WHERE I SAW US, AND WE WERE IN THAT PERIOD WHERE WE WERE KIND OF ON THE PLATEAU, AND IT WAS RELATIVELY EASY, AND I WAS JUST ENJOYING HAVING IT EASIER. AND SO I REALLY WASN'T MOTIVATED TO GET OUT AND TO REALLY EXPAND AND INCREASE AND DO WHAT I KNEW THAT GOD WANTED ME TO DO BECAUSE I WAS JUST ENJOYING THE FREEDOM, THE LIBERTY OF NOT BEING UNDER PRESSURE. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE 
that are just like this. They just take the easiest course, whatever is the simplest, and they're just, they're just doing what's easy. It's like water that seeks the lowest level. They just are, they aren't going to go uphill. They aren't going to press and persevere through anything. They're just taking the easiest course. You will never see God's abundance and perfect will fulfilled in your life doing that. You've got to be willing to exert yourself. You've got to be willing to get out of being complacent and get to where you persevere. And then I was also talking about that I had a fear of failure because for the first time we were seeing success and it felt so good not to be under the pressure and stuff that it was, there was a temptation to just coast right here and not put ourselves at risk again. And so fear of failure keeps many people from stretching themselves and believing God for more. They would rather be secure than they had to take any risk. I'm telling you, if you are going to see great things happen, you got to be willing to take a risk. And really, if you have a fear of failure, the greatest failure would be to do nothing because you're afraid you might fail. That is failure, even though that the world might look at it and think, well, you're just as good as anybody else. But no, God is going to... When we stand before the Lord, God had a plan for your life. And you aren't going to be judged by what acclaim men gave unto you and whether you won awards or whether you were secure and all of these kind of things. You'll be, you'll be put up against what God's will for your life was. And if you don't fulfill it, it doesn't matter if you were successful in some other area, not going to count. You know, I don't know these things for sure, but I've read about Elvis Presley and I can name probably a lot of names. Many people, especially the younger ones, won't know Tennessee Ernie Ford and people like that. But people like that at one time, I believe, had a call on their life for ministry. I actually had the guy who was, I think, a stepbrother of uh, Elvis Presley and talked about how that he had a call on his life. I know for sure that Tennessee Ernie Ford, he was actually a traveling evangelistic singer, and he just couldn't seem to make it. Uh, in the uh, Christian realm, and so he became a secular entertainer. He's the one that wrote the song about 16 tons. You load 16 tons, and what do you get? And, and anyway, there was a lot of these people that I believe had a call and an anointing on their life, and they were they had this ability to use it for good, and yet they they used it in some other way. When they stand before God, it doesn't matter if they won success and acclaim in the world standards and ever became famous, what did God anoint them to do? Did they do what God anointed them to do? See, we're going to be held up against God's standard, not man's standard. It doesn't matter if you make money and if you become a success in the terms of the world. What did God call you to do? If you look at things that way, then I think that there are many, many people, I would even venture to say most people, probably watching this program, have just found what it takes to survive and to maintain, but you're letting your dreams, the things that God has placed in your heart that you really would like to do, and you're just letting them go. You know, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me when He told me I was limiting Him by my small thinking, uh, and we started building these Karis Bible College facilities, and we've now got $120 million assets in just about 11 years. We've, we've seen God just supernaturally do things, and everything is totally debt-free now. That's awesome. That's awesome what God has done. But you know, when I started building these buildings, one of the things that the Lord applied this about don't limit Him, prior to that time, I would have a vision of doing something, but I would think, well, this is going to be expensive. What can I do? How can I cut this cost back? I just thought poorly, and I limited God by thinking of the cheapest way to do things. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be good stewards and that we ought to waste money. That's not what I'm saying. But when I started building all of these buildings here, one of the things that I did, I just determined that I was not going to limit God by pulling out my wallet and seeing what I could afford. I couldn't afford to build any of these buildings that we're building. And so if I, if I didn't have the money to do the cheapest thing, why should I even limit it? I just started dreaming big, and I built these buildings exactly the way that I wanted them. 
I put the materials, a lot of wood. I put in rafters. We've got these rafters. We got seven rafters in our facility that I call the barn. And these are some of the largest rafters. Well, I, I'm for sure that they're the largest wooden rafters in Colorado. I had one person tell me that they're the largest wooden rafters in the U.S. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know in Colorado they're used. They're 90,000 pounds a piece. And that's uh, 45 tons a piece, these rafters. And it's just what I wanted. I just thought about what do I want? I've always liked the clear story, the open rafters. I like the wood and the stone. And I just built what I wanted. And did you know we were two years into this process of dealing with architects, going back and forth. I drew things out on a napkin and then they'd come back and show, some, show me something and I'd say, well, that's similar, but here's what I want. And they'd go back and we were two years into it and they actually had the plans drawn up so that you could build the building and we held a meeting and it was two years into this process that I said, what's this going to cost me? Prior to that time, I hadn't let money restrict me. And I know that there's a lot of people watching this that you have just been brought up to be so frugal and to think that this is good stewardship. Well, I'm not talking about being wasteful, but I am talking about being cheap. And many people miss God and limit what God can do in their life because they're just constantly thinking that we just don't have any money and we can't do anything. I didn't have any money, and yet I dreamed big. And in a uh, little over nine years, we had $120 million worth of facilities, debt-free, paid for. Praise God. Some of you have heard me mention that we uh, took out a loan for our garage, but praise God, in 28 months, we paid off $28 million on that garage. And we now own all of this property and all of these buildings totally debt-free. And we did it in a little over nine and a half years. And they aren't cheap. That's another thing, see, that you can limit God. You have this mindset. We had a woman that came to our Bible school, and this woman was raised in the Depression. She was just a little girl when that happened, but she went through the Depression, and because of it, it influenced the whole way that she looked at everything. And this woman had money. She was very prosperous, very well off, but she had a a depression mentality, and she would save bars of soap. And when you got down to where you couldn't really use the bar anymore, she'd save those. And then when she got enough of them, she'd melt them together to make one new bar of soap and use it. She would take a jelly jar and not only scrape out everything inside of there, but then put a little bit of water in there and so that she got every bit of that flavor. She just had this poverty mindset. She would drive across town to save, you know, get triple coupons at a place that was on the other side of town and probably spend five dollars worth of gas in order to be able to save 30 or 40 cents. And there's some people that honestly, your mindset, your poverty mentality limits God. There is no limit on finances. The only limit is what you place on Him. And I know that there are many of you watching this and saying, well, that's not true. It's, it's not true. I have a limited amount of finances. It's because you believe that way. You don't have to believe that way. God can supernaturally bless you. You know, I talked about this woman that invented this little exercise thing, and she's made hundreds of millions, maybe a billion dollars or something off of that. That same woman was so poor that Jamie and I helped her sometimes, and she also helped us. We were pretty poor ourselves. And so we were both struggling, but she got hold of the Word of God. And one day she was making clay for her kids because she didn't like the store-bought clay because it was somewhat toxic. And plus it would stick to things. It would get in the carpet and it'd mess it up. And she just came up with her own formula that wouldn't stick to anything except the clay. It was not toxic. They could have eaten it if they wanted to. And she was baking this clay on the stove for her kids and she was praying and saying, God, I know that you want me to prosper. I know that you want this family to have everything that we need and you want us to be a blessing to other people. But she was saying, we're just barely eating. I know that you can give me a creative idea. Speak to me. Show me something. And as she was cooking this clay, the Lord just spoke to her and he says, take this clay and put it in Ziploc bags 
And she put, uh, I think it was, she rolled them up into little cylinders, and I think there were six of them that she put in a Ziploc bag and take them and start going to these um, craft fairs and selling this clay and advertise it as non-toxic, doesn't stick to anything except itself. And she started doing that and going out on weekends to these craft fairs, and she wound up employing, I think it was like 80-something, 90 people. She went from barely eating herself to where now she was the one who was supplying the needs of 80 or 90 people. She became prosperous, and then she went on to invent this exercise thing, and today she's super wealthy. And I mean, she didn't have any extra talents or skills above anybody else. She just believed God. I'm telling you, there is no reason that any person watching this can't prosper. The only limits are limits that you place on God. Now, I'm not talking about you going out and in yourself, but I'm saying if you could relate to God and say, God, you made me for more than this. You're not the one who wants me to live at this standard. And I'm not just talking about finances. I'm talking about in relationships, in in feeling like you're productive and making a difference in what your job is and your career. Whatever it is, you just say, Father, I believe that you want me for more than this. You, you created me for more than this. Show me how to get from where I am. And you start taking the limits off of God. Don't limit Him because you're lazy, you're complacent. Don't be afraid of taking a risk and possibly running into failure. The greatest failure of all is not to even try. So you got to stretch yourself out there And you've got to take the limits off of God and recognize that God has more for you than what you are experiencing. I believe I could say that across the board to any person. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire. There's a lot of millionaires that still aren't satisfied in their relationships. They still don't have the joy. They don't have peace. They're sick in their body. You can't buy a healing. There are some things that the doctors can't deal with. And you need to start learning how to take the limits off of God in the physical realm and start believing God for health and emotional things. I'm telling you, there there is nobody watching this program that has every single facet of your life totally ironed out and that you don't need to increase and take the limits off of God. God has more for you than what you're experiencing And I want to encourage you to get these materials. I think that this will be a blessing to you. I've got this book that I wrote about this. I've also got this little uh, static cling sticker that you can pull off of here and put on a mirror is where I keep it, on the mirror that I look at in every morning. I look at this and say, don't limit God, Psalm 78, 41. We also have this teaching in a study guide that is specifically designed so that you can do discipleship and Bible studies and train other people. It'll take some of these radical statements and you read the statements and then you just discuss it. Do you agree? Do you believe that everybody can increase, that God has something more for every single person? And you just discuss it. No right or wrong answers. And then there's scriptures that you read that answers the question. I call it discipleship for dummies. And now we've got a brand new teaching that's upgraded about don't limit God 20 years later I promise you, this will challenge you. You need this. So listen to our announcer as he gives you this information, and please call or write today to receive these materials. Learn how to take the limits off God when you get Andrew's new series, Don't Limit God, 20 Years Later. This series is available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Also available today is the Don't Limit God book and companion study guide. Each of these resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also, as a special offer, Andrew is giving away the Don't Limit God sticker as his free gift to you when you write or call. This offer is limited to one free sticker per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free sticker. The individual topic highlighted on today's broadcast is available as an audio CD for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. 
But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide today's teaching free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. In the month of March, join Andrew in Woodland Park for our annual Karis Bible College Men's Advance. Guest speakers at this event include Hall of Fame and Super Bowl winning coach Tony Dungy, along with James Brown, Emmy Award winning broadcaster on the CBS and NFL networks. Next, Andrew will be speaking in Powell, Ohio. Lastly, in March, Andrew will be speaking in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And in April, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs. Next, Andrew will be in Woodland Park to host the annual Karis Bible College Campus Days with guest speakers Carrie Pickett, Daniel Bennett, Greg Moore, Rick McFarland, Wendell Parr, Barry Bennett, and Lawson Perdue. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision, and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years. But I've got at least a hundred million dollars worth, maybe two hundred million dollars worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. But we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College. Do you want to connect with like-minded believers? Then Karis Bible Studies is the place for you. Find a Bible study near you by visiting charisbiblestudies.net. Did you know that we have over 200,000 hours of free material on our website? I mean, you if you were to watch every single day for eight hours a day, it would take you over 22 years to go through all of that, and it's free. We do have some things for sale, but we have a great website. I encourage you to check it out awmi.net. We've got television programs, radio programs, we've got videos, we've got teaching, we've got books on there, just all kinds of things. Check it out, awmi.net.